All right, I'm fixing to get started making the uh, rocket stove out of this propane tank. I've already got the valve removed, and I did that by uh, shoving a bar through this, and then hooking onto the valve with a pipe wrench, and using the metal bar here to hold the tank, and the pipe wrench to unscrew it. Now, I already said in my last video that I don't recommend you doing this unless you're 100% certain you know what you're doing. So I'll say it again. Uh, I take no responsibility if you should decide to try to pull a valve off a propane tank. Uh, you certainly want to make sure it's empty before you do anything, especially concerning making sparks around it. And uh, if you should do this and get the valve off, the way I purged the tank was to fill it up with water. All right, first thing I'm going to do is uh, remove this ring on the bottom. It's got some spot welds, three spot welds that hold it on. And uh, let's see here. What I'm going to do is uh, cut on either side. Here we are. I'm going to cut on either side of the spot welds and then take my angle grinder and try to knock the welds off with my angle grinder and smooth it out. This is going to be the bottom of the stove and uh, I want this to look really nice so I'm going to go to uh, greater lengths to uh, make my weld a little nicer and uh, to clean up spots like that that I'm going to be cutting off. Okay, uh, I'm going to get started on that. Okay, I was able to uh, cut through the welds with uh, my little cutoff wheel that's on my uh, battery powered DeWalt angle grinder. I got it off and now I'm going to take my, uh, ang my angle grinder with a grinding wheel on it and I just touch these little uh, spot welds up a little bit and make it look a little nicer. You get the idea. Okay, I've got that all grounded down and uh, I went ahead and where the ring had touched the bottom of this there was uh, some rust pits. So I went ahead and grounded wherever the ring was just to uh, make it look a little nicer. Uh, boy, this is some thick paint on here so it must have been powder coated. Uh, I'm going to go back with white just because it's already white and it's got a nice powder coating over it. All right, my next, uh, what I'm going to do next is, uh, hold on, I got to score a line around or, or make a line or, uh, around the uh, top of this where I'm going to cut the top off. I'm not going to be using this top like I did in my Freon bottle videos, rocket stove videos. Uh, I have a piece of plate steel that I'm going to be using for the top of this, so if this can be discarded, I really have no use for it. So uh, that's my next video. I'm going to score a line all the way around this, real even, and uh, cut it off. I believe it's not so thick that I can't cut it with my jigsaw. If it is too thick, <clears throat> then I'm going to use my cutoff wheel because I need a really smooth cut and a cutting torch just uh, would leave too much slag. I am in the process of uh, saving for a plasma cutter and uh, man, when I get that, that's going to open up a a whole new world of uh, opportunity as far as cutting nice clean cuts and uh, Tractor Supply has got one for 800 bucks and I'm going to start saving so uh, that's my next I'm going to make that line and uh, start cutting I just wanted to show you the little jig I made let me uh, yeah let me bring this in a little bit I made that jig just so I can score a straight line around the upper edge. It's just some scrap lumber I had laying around. And uh, I'll show you what I got right there. There we go. Just uh, 
Now, I, I do need a little help. I'm going to get my wife out here and have her hold that jig real steady while I turn the propane tank, or uh, maybe vice versa. I'll hold the propane, propane tank real steady and uh, turn that jig around it. We'll see. I just wanted to show you my little homemade jig. Well, it turns out I didn't need help. <laughs> well, I guess I did. <laughs> anyway, I, I got that line marked. I just uh, stood the tank up on in there and drug that thing around it. Uh, I'm going to get my cutter out and go to cut. Well, that's a nice smooth cut and uh, I'm really glad I used that cutoff wheel. I don't think my jigsaw would have made this perfect a cut. Here I'll uh, zoom you in here. That's going to be really easy to weld. This is uh, the edge that I cut off. Pretty smooth. Alright, now what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to work on the legs. I'm going to do the bottom first, get the bottom done with the legs. And then I'll stand it up and I'll get my top. I got a piece of uh, plate steel over there that I'm going to be using. Alright, I'm going to do the legs next. I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to show you how I cut the angle on these legs and uh, I can't tell you what angle it is because I'm terrible at math and uh, that's a bit hard to admit but math is one of my weakest subjects and uh, I don't know angles and that kind of thing. A lot of times I just eyeball things and uh, this is really embarrassing. I don't even have a high school diploma. And the only reason I'm telling you this is because I want, if there's any kids that stumbled across this, I just want you to know what a disadvantage you're at not knowing math. Math is one, one of the things that you will use every single day of your life. And uh, if you're thinking about dropping out or if you're doing terrible in math, do whatever it takes to understand math because not a day will go by that you don't need to use math somehow in your daily life. Well, anyway. Let me show you how I got this angle and what I'm doing to get the angle. And uh, all I did was eyeball this. Hold on. Why won't you zoom? There we go. Uh, to begin with, this piece here is 16 inches long. I marked the center. I'm uh, bringing it a little more. Uh, I marked the center, the 8 inch mark. And this is one inch wide, so I marked a half inch to get the center of that. And then I took my square and I put the one inch mark right on the center tick, right there. And I got the two inch mark on the end. And, and of course, zero would be right, right here. And uh, that's and I'm only doing this angle because just eyeballing it, that looks like about the angle I want. I don't want a 45. Uh, so I'm going to start with that and then when I weld it on, when I get this welded on, what I'll do is hold something square against uh, the base of the leg and, and make these flush with whatever, you know, the table I'll be setting this on. So that's my way around my weakness of, uh, of math. Alright, I'm going to cut these and I'm going to weld them on and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I've got these uh, four legs cut out and what I'm going to do is measure the uh, circumference of this and divide it by four and uh, that's how I'm going to figure out where to weld my legs on. <clears throat> I think I'm going to uh, cut my hole for the pipe in the side before I do that. And let me show you one other dilemma that I have. Uh, I have to make a decision. See, I've got to get the, the inner pipe with the combustion chamber uh, down in here and then out the, the side here. Hold on. Hit the wrong button. Sorry. Wrong button again. There we go. Okay. You know, the, uh, the feed tube for the wood is going in the side and then the combustion chamber will come up through the middle and be flush with the top. 
well, I have, uh, have to make a decision on whether I want to make uh, this. this